hi students today we will start the third unit the title of third unit is embedded firmware okay the first topic that we are going to discuss is introduction to embedded firmware okay so we will study what is a firmware how it is used inside an embedded system what are the types of programming that we are using to develop an embedded firmware etc so embedded firmware refers to the control algorithm or the program instructions and the configuration settings that an embedded system developer dumps into the code memory of the embedded system okay so what are the things we are giving to the embedded system a control algorithm what the embedded system has to do at a particular time that is a control algorithm okay so the other name of control algorithm is program instructions okay so not only program instructions we will give configuration settings also okay so the embedded firmware consists of programs and configuration settings okay so this configuration settings and program will be given to the code memory or program memory okay so whenever we turn on the embedded system this program and settings that are present inside the code memory will start running and the embedded system will run accordingly okay so as i told you previously an embedded system means a software is embedded into the hardware okay so it is a combination of software and hardware okay a software alone cannot work and a hardware alone cannot work okay both has to combine and work together then only we will get a meaningful embedded system and the embedded firmware consists of all the control instructions okay so there are various methods to develop this embedded firmware okay so what are the different methods we can write this program in two ways one is using high level language like uh, embedded c or embedded c++ uh, then java then uh, arduino programming so these are the different types of programming languages that are called high level languages okay we can develop this program in an integrated development environment or ide okay the second method is assembly language program okay so what is an assembly language program we are directly giving instructions one by one instructions we are giving okay but uh, if you are comparing this high level language and uh, this assembly language program this high level language programming is very easy because it consists of so many library files uh, and we can call those library files we can compile it and uh, we will uh, get uh, some program and it is very easy to program also but if you consider assembly language programming it is difficult because the length of the program will increase because we have to give line by line okay the instructions each instruction has to be given per line okay and the length of the program will also increase 
okay and this assembly language programming will be targeted for different uh, microprocessors or microcontrollers that means for 8086 microprocessor we have to write one type of program for 8085 we have to write one type of program for 8051 microcontroller we have to write another type of program so uh, there is no common format for writing a program but if you consider high level languages we can write a program and uh, we can compile it for any type of processors okay the compiler will do the function okay and the ultimate uh, machine code that is generated will be same so that is a peculiarity of what high level languages such as embedded c java arduino programming etc okay So we have, if you look into this diagram, we have uh, two types of programming. Okay, first one is the programming that we are using uh, using Arduino, and the second one is assembly language programming. Okay, so in the first type of programming, what we are doing, we are having so many library library files. Okay. So while we compile the program, all these library files are taken together and uh, then we will compile and we will uh, generate a code. Okay. So ultimately we need a machine language code. Okay. Binary code because the computer is capable of reading only binary numbers. Okay. So if you are writing a program in high level language, it is easy for the programmer to write the code because all the functions are available in the libraries that is mentioned here, C++ libraries. Okay, so everything will be, so we are writing the program in this manner. Okay, this is the uh, way in which uh, we are writing old loop uh, digital writer so this is a program for Arduino okay so a delay will be given so directly we can give delay and it is easy to understand also okay but here if you look here this is an assembly language program okay here move a comma b add a comma something okay so this is an assembly language program and uh, there will be an assembler here we are using an assembler then this assembler will assemble the program and uh, the compiler will be there it will convert to machine language okay then finally we will get a op code this is what is called a op code okay so ultimately this op code is used to give instruction to the microprocessors and uh, microcontrollers okay so these codes that are written in Arduino it is easy to read and easy to understand okay but the assembly language codes are difficult to read and uh, it is very difficult to write these codes okay but anyhow However, we are writing the code, ultimately we are converting these codes to machine language. Okay. Then only the microprocessor or the microcontroller can understand the instruction that the user want to execute. The instruction set for each family of processors or controller is different and the program written in either of the method give, given above should be converted into a processor understandable machine code before loading it to the program memory okay so already i told you this point okay so however we are writing the program it doesn't matter it is for our ease of writing the program we are using high level language or assembly language okay ultimately we will convert 
it into what? A machine readable code. Okay. Before we are loading it into the program memory. Okay. The process of converting the program written either in high level language or assembly language to machine readable binary code is called hex file creation. Hex file. What is this hex file? Hex means a hexadecimal. Okay. The file will consist of only hexadecimal numbers. So, we are writing the code in English and numbers. We are using English alphabets and numbers. But ultimately, we are generating a hexa file or hex file. Okay, so this hex file consists of only numbers. Okay, so for each instruction, we are having a particular number. Okay, hexadecimal number. That hexadecimal number will provide instruction to the processor. Okay, so each hexadecimal number will have a meaning. Okay, so move, move A comma B. So move A comma B is an instruction that is written in assembly language. But uh, if you consider the hexadecimal number corresponding, it may be a 16 bit hexadecimal number. Okay. When the processor reads that hexadecimal number, it will understand that uh, this is a program for moving A comma B. So that is already stored inside the processor. Understood? Okay. If the program is written in embedded C or C++ using an integrated development environment, then the cross compiler included in the IDE converted it into corresponding processor or controller understandable X5. Okay. So cross compiler that is the key thing. Okay. Cross compiler is used for converting the code that is written in what? this integrated development environment to a hex file okay if we are following an assembly language based programming technique you can use the utility supplied by the processor or controller vendors to convert the source code into hex file okay so in the case of IDE or common programming languages like C++ or Java or C or embedded C. We can use this cross compiler. Okay. So this cross compiler will facilitate this operation. So we can come. Why it is called a cross compiler? Because we can convert from C to hex code c++ to hex code java to x hex code or any other programming language to hex code or hexadecimal number that's why it is called a cross compiler but in the case of assembly language we are having an assembler okay this assembler will be different for different processors okay so that's why it is said, saying like the utilities supplied by the processor or controller vendors or manufacturers to convert the source code into hex code. Okay. So that is the process that we are using in assembly language programming. Okay.
so here we are using the assembly language and the machine code will be generated here we are uh, using the id what is the peculiarity of using id if you are using id we can simply call the libraries because so many programs will be already present inside the libraries and that program we can call and we can execute easily that is the peculiarity of ides okay so anyhow the programs has to be converted to machine language and the program file consisting of machine language is called a hex file understood okay so sometimes uh, we are writing a program to a microcontroller or a microprocessor okay so if you want to change the program or some simulator softwares are there okay those software softwares are called the simulators we can write a program and we can check whether it is working or not okay so we will write a program and we can check the correctness of the program okay by giving some parameters using some simulators if it is working if if it is working in the simulator level then we can directly write this program to the controller okay so we have a microprocessors and a microcontrollers okay so what is the difference between microprocessor and microcontroller the major difference microprocessor doesn't have a memory to store the program every time when we are booting the embedded system we have to load the program that is the problem with what microprocessor but in the case of microcontroller it consists of a memory or rom okay so what are the different types of rom e prom e prom simple prom is there okay so erasable program memory is there uh, electrically erasable program memory is there okay so we can load this program to this p rom or e prom or e prom okay then finally uh, we can uh, turn on the embedded system and we can run the embedded system okay so that is the importance of program so thank you for listening to this lecture okay